about a month ago, I introduced the world to the project I'm currently working on, which is the Modicoil project. A project to create modular coil windings that can be used in a motor or generator application in a modular fashion. And I've even designed and printed the rotor for my generator build, which will be the final part of this project. A sticking point for the Modicoil project is finding a way to actually wind these coils in an efficient manner. You see, winding these coils by hand can be quite tedious and you're not going to get the prettiest looking or the most efficient or accurately wound modular coil by winding it by hand. Now, yes, you could use a drill to wind your coils. However, there are disadvantages to that. Well, first of all, not everyone has access to a drill. And even if they did, it would be suboptimal because it's quite difficult to count how many turns have been wound at the speeds of a drill and the geometry of your coil holder, such as the case with the modular coil, is not very practical to you know, be wound with a drill. With this in mind, my latest addition to the modular coil project is something I call the modular coil winder. A hand cranked, fully 3D printed winder that can be used to wind modular coil specifically. The advantages of this, well, it's currently a pile of parts right now, but we'll get to that in a second, is that it's fully 3D printable and it requires a, it requires no external power source being a hand crank device. Without further ado, we shall firstly take a look at each individual part and their function. So let's get to that now. Firstly, there is the base. Now there are two versions of this. There is the modular version, which I have printed here, and there is the monolithic version, which I will also provide an STL for. I've printed the monolithic version due to lifestyle constraints, meaning I can't actually spend the time it takes to print this as a whole part. However, if you have the time, the build volume, and the filament, you can go ahead and print this monolithically. However, if you're like me, and you need to print this in a piecemeal, then the modular option is the way to go. However, modular or monolithic, this is what the finished base will look like once assembled except your flat base at the bottom might not be green. The modular version just includes the flat base, the coil arm holder, and the spool holder as separate parts. This is the coil winder arm, and it's what attaches to the modular coils to be wound. Now, it's square keyed so that it fits to where this crevice is here, and it fits inside there, and that sort of torques the coil to be you know, rotated round and you know, have the wire spun around it. It also has a hole for a handle, so you can attach a handle in order to rotate the winder arm. There is also another hole inside the square key, which is where you will screw the actual module coil to the arm so that it can be secured into place when wound. The coil winding arm also has this cavity here and the purpose of this is so that when it gets inserted into its post what you can then do is attach a nut and bolt here to act as a stopping screw so that it doesn't slide out when winding. This is the handle that attaches to the arm. It's something quick I whipped up in FreeCAD. It's probably not the best design but it works for this demonstration and that can just slot into there and there you go. It does the job for me just fine, but you will probably think of a better solution than me. This tiny but very important print is the wire guide and it attaches to the base of the small holder and what this does is it aligns the wire coming from the spool with the crevice on the module coil 
so that all of the wire gets wound into the crevice here and not around other places on the water coil which would be messy and inefficient and so on and this prevents that because what happens is that when you have a spool of wire on here as the spool is being unwound the wire path will travel from side to side and this sort of offsets that last but certainly not least we have the spool shaft this is what will hold the spool of wire in place whilst we're winding the coil and it is basically a fork of the coil winder arm which i have i have here you can see the resemblance i basically just modified this model to make this one and similarly you can just use this crevice here to insert screws and bolt into and to and to cure the shaft with the with the spool of wire on it onto the actual uh, spool holder an important thing to note with this model is that you want to print it so that the crevice here is the cavity is facing down towards the the print bed otherwise if you did like i did and made the same mistake of uh, printing it this way what you'll end up having is you'll have supports that you know that protrude like throughout the uh that go all the way inside of the cavity and those will be a nightmare to, rem to remove without potentially breaking the actual print itself so you want to print it with the cavity facing down to avoid hard to remove supports because I'm using the modular version of the base, the first step in assembling the coil winder itself is assembling the first part of the base, which is attaching the, the, the flat part of the base to the spool holder. And to do that, there's two holes here where I can insert screws, which uh, actually go into these two holes here. So this will attach to the base like this. There's no real need to use threaded inserts when screwing this into here as the what well, just any normal screw will self tap into these holes. So now that we've attached two parts of the base together, the flat base and the spool holder, what we can now do is screw a hole into here and attach our post for our coil winder arm, which is here and this will attach on there like so. Okay, now that we've attached the post for our winder arm, what we can now do is attach the wire guide. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to slide in the winding arm and secure it into place with a stopping screw. And now that that's fastened and secure, we can now pay our attention to the rear of the of the coil winder where we will attach the spool of wire to the spool to the spool shaft and attach that to the actual uh, rear of the coil winder and once fully assembled this is what the modular coil winder actually looks like now you would obviously attach your modular coil to there and you can then um, you know, create a loop of wire that would you could screw down when you actually screw down the the coil into the into the arm and you can begin winding hi future me here so as you saw that didn't work too well however I've made a couple of revisions to this module coil winder that I think will make it work a lot better. I've reprinted this uh, coil winder arm piece here, and what I've done is I've made it so that the, the base of the cylinder of the arm, I've made that a lot thicker. Well, I've made it two millimeters thicker so that it will fit more snugly into the hole of the, uh, of the post here. And I've made it so that the so that the um, securing screw is fitted on the outside 
of the post rather than in the middle and that makes it a little bit easier to fit. I've also adjusted the wire guide so that it's um, an angle and that makes it so that the wire feed is more in line with the module coil and as you can see I've done some prior testing but as you can see that works a heck of a lot better than the previous version. Now that's rapid prototyping. Now I won't deny this needs a fair bit of improvement, particularly in terms of the alignment. This could be a lot better. Uh, the tolerances on the arm could be a lot tighter and that would improve this a whole lot. However, I think the basic concept is a good one because it means that more people, people without necessarily, you know, people who don't have you know, power tools can still, you know, make their own module coils at home in a very, in a way that's a lot easier than just winding it purely by hand. And that's part of what decentralizing manufacturing is all about, really, and becoming more self-sufficient. It's about, it's not just about being able to make things yourself and do things in a small scale decentralized way. It's, it's also about creating tools and solutions that can make doing that a lot easier. And that is what I've attempted to achieve with this device. I think this is now the fourth installment in the module coil series. I may upload a video uh, on an improved module coil version, a version three, but I think this version is good to go for the generator. Anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and comment what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care, stay safe, bye for now.